are ridiculous. <sighs> We're getting chickens tomorrow. We're going to make a makeshift shelter for them. Typical Quam style, I guess. Until we have something more substantial. I actually did not want to get chickens right away. I wanted to wait. But then, one day, I was talking to my friend and I bought chicken, pastured chicken eggs from her. And she told me that she was going to be getting rid of her birds, downsizing a bit just to collect a breath of air. Ah, and, um, and so I looked online and I saw some layers that are pullets. They were hatched Febu in February. And that is a really good time to rate. That's a really good time to, to buy baby birds because their peak laying will then be when it is winter time. So, uh, all right. So we, uh, here, you need to go inside and play for a little bit or come underneath the shelter. Look at those beautiful raspberries. We actually got some. We actually got some. Yeah. You eat them? Eat the raspberries? Oh, Kalina. What a budger. Hi, Lily. Hi, Lily. So, here are our chickens. And sadly, that's the coop that they have. We need to get something better situated for them, but at least they're out of the cold and the elements. And Kalina has already been showing her love for the chickens by guarding them and everything. So, so yeah. So the lettuce, um, two things. I might be able to harvest some of the lettuce, but my uh, one of my neighbors, he was like, and I noticed the same thing about mine, is when we had some fall lettuce started and when it was a little seedling and it got covered by some leaves and um, kind of protected from the winter. In Iowa, it can get negative 25 degrees, but it actually overwintered and was ready a whole month earlier than the other lettuce that you planted started out. Yes, there's none. There's no more, buddy.
check out the eggs. So my chickens, we've had them for two weeks now. And my chickens at first did not have a very dark yolk. And we started supplementing with mealworms and we started giving them lots of scraps and we got them um, really boosted uh, with nutrition and seaweed as well, actually. And my egg yolks are darker than the store's pastured hens, pasture raised hens. So I think that that is fabulous. And I just think not only like yolks, it's pretty easy and fast to see that difference, but I think about the soil building of my terrain in general and the nutrients and micronutrients and microbes and metabolites from the microbes that futuristically can be in my soil feeding my plants it's harder to see that nutritional difference in a plant. I mean, so, I mean, depends on how drastic it is, but um, those those little things matter, and that's what I really would like for my family is to have, and for everyone's family is to have very nutritionally dense food. So ricotta cheese is one of the easiest cheeses to make. It's very easy. All you do is heat up some milk and basically get it to almost like the boiling point. And then you add in, I've got a gallon of milk here, so we're going to add in two thirds cup of vinegar or lemon juice and it curdles the cheese fast. And all you do is strain it with a cheesecloth. It's amazing. Sean wants to be in the video, so we're gonna fill this with two thirds cup of vinegar. Okay? Do you wanna do it? Mm hmm. Okay. I hope I have enough vinegar. I do have apple cider vinegar. Do you know what two thirds is? No! You don't know? How much? Two thirds. It's kind of like. Halfway? Well, almost halfway, but a little over halfway. Okay. Mom, uh, uh, uh. And that's like three fourths. So we gotta dump a little bit of it out. Okay. Nah, yeah, we'll put it. We'll just we'll just put it down the drain a little bit. Okay. I don't think it actually matters when you put it in. Just that it's in there. And it is already doing its thing. Nice. Wowza. Oh, wow. Look at that. Perfect. So as it heats up, it'll get more. And if it does, if it stays cloudy, cloudy, you can put more ricotta cheese. I mean, you can put more in it. I'm going to actually uh, try to scrape off this ladle and not use the ladle. Mm -hmm. Look at that. We might, as it heats up, we'll see if it gets even more coagulated and put more acid in it. Maybe we'll add some lemon juice because we have some. We have some extra lemon juice. Okay, I think it's done. We didn't even have to get this boiling at all. Nowhere near boiling. Um, there would be a little bit of cloudy. Maybe people can get it less cloudy than that, but I'm satisfied with that. And this will be good for either smoothies or the chickens. What are you doing? Make your lemonade? Yeah. Okay, don't drop any of that. Uh, it's all gonna Nice and crispy. I made the fire. Thank you for making the fire. I always do jasmine rice. And this is my tamarack yummy sauce. Excuse my blueberry mouth, but um, I know this video has gotten very random, but this is a chicken that I had used for roasted chicken tacos. My husband doesn't really like a roasted chicken by itself, so I like invent it like Mexican-y style and he enjoys it. 
and uh, and then I and then I boiled. We all we also had chicken Alfredo the night after that because we couldn't get through this whole big chicken that was uh, pasture raised. And now I've got a nice pot of broth, chicken broth. And when you often people say you can't give your dog chicken bones. Well, if you cook them overnight or like for a couple days, that really breaks down, gets a lot more nutrients into the broth, makes it thicker as well. Also, it makes the bones so soft that there would be no, uh, no problem with feeding it to your dog or your cat. So um, that is a wise word. Um, you could also feed it to the chickens, which sounds hideous, cannibalish. Um, a chickens will kill each other in a pen if they're overcrowded and or hungry and eat each other's innards out first. That's graphic and gross to think about. But it's true. Now, should you give it to your chickens? I don't mind giving it to my chickens, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna give it to my dog because I want my dog to have a lot of good nutrition from even those bones. And I know that she will eat those bones. They're like a mush by now. The eucalyptus plants, I brought one inside already. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the other ones back, but not take all of the foliage just because I'm thinking that that might kind of shock it too much. And they were planted this year, so I don't want to disrupt them if they have a chance to survive. And I am going to put pine needles around them and okay. maybe and some plastic colder, I'll just add more and, more and hope more that and they more. grow from the root next year. Maybe no plastic because... I'm just thinking about like water penetration and stuff and fungus growth and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. Or I can experiment with putting some plastic on some part of it and then leaving the other part. So one blessing that we have on our property, we already have growing a lot of medicinal herbs in our forests and stuff. And I'd like to do more videos and harvesting of those in the future. But we have rose hips growing. And you see a lot of ads lately for rose hips. At least I have. And we, my mom told me that when uh, World War I, World War II was going on and there was a shortage of like imports, they told people to get really creative with rose hips. And because they're a good source of vitamin C among many other flavonoids and awesomeness. So uh, I'm going to be harvesting these after the first frost, I guess, and making something out of them, hopefully. Hi, Kalina. One thing I love about this broccoli is the, that it produces one large one in the middle, and it didn't really produce a large one for me. But this fall, it's taken off and it's giving me lots of little sprouts. And all the little sprouts in general make for a bit of, uh, quite a bit of a harvest. Okay, guys. Guys, I'm actually in awe right now because not only did I have, when you have kids, sometimes pieces of everything get lost. Not only did I have all my pieces to this, <laughs> frame. I also put it together without instructions. So I'm feeling pretty proud of myself right now. I just thought you probably don't know. I had bought this before previously and it was at our old acreage and I had all of the metal pieces in a bag just stuffed in some garbage bags and it was in a box and it was previously laying in our shop. So that's why I'm surprised I have all the pieces. 
It's not a jungle gym, kid. Okay, this is the south side of our house, so I'm just curious to see how long I can grow. Maybe some spinach, actually. Some spinach grows fast and it's really cold hardy. Um, and some radish, of course, is really cold hardy too and super good for you. So I think I'll grow some radish on one side and some spinach on the other. I'm gonna dry my herbs this way instead of stringing all these guys up. So I've got sage, rosemary, a little bit of oregano, I've got parsley. Um, I also have thyme that's outside that I'll bring in, but I won't put it here. I'm just gonna come and rotate this. I come back here often. It's in the back of my storage room. And I also have an ozo machine that I switch on at times just a little bit. And, uh, I'm going to put an air purifier right here on the floor. And it's not a dusty place, so I think this will be very nice. And I'll come and fluff it up every once in a while. Okay. 